Guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so now. Hit that uh, subscribe button. Give us a like. Miko's trying to tell you the same thing. And uh, be notified by ringing the bell when our next video is coming up. Check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook should be scrolling along the bottom right now. And that's our cheap shameless plug for this one. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Well, believe it or not, we are in Texas. And it is 16 degrees and it is snowing. And uh, actually the flakes are starting to get a little bit bigger. Um, this is round one, or I guess actually round three. Round one came in about last night with a little bit of sleet. And then uh, we had more snow. We are actually doing okay. I did a video uh, not too long ago on how to keep the pipes from freezing. We're actually doing just fine with that. I uh, kind of wanted to show you again what we had done. Uh, we, of course, we've got our pipes insulated in our bay. And this is the wet bay uh, coming in. We've got our Frost King uh, heat uh, wrap around our hose. I've got a ceramic heater that's been blowing for the last uh, probably three days as our temperatures really have not climbed above freezing in that point of time. Um, we, did, uh, we did insulate that with a double layer of uh, aluminum foil, but I since went and got some, uh, some pipe insulation and put on there only for the simple reason it's going to get a little bit colder than what we expected. One. We did have one situation where our sewer hose froze up. Um, I thought about going to get a hair dryer and, and uh, putting some heat to it, but uh, honestly, I went down to our local Walmart and just bought another hose. Um, wasn't that much uh, expense there and just took it up and then uh, worked on uh, gravity feed, I guess is what you would call it, uh, down to um, the uh, sewer pipe hose or uh, the sewer pipe dump, um, and it's working out really well. But anyway, that's uh, pretty much what we've done. And as uh, the snow's coming down, like I said, it's 16 degrees. Uh, supposed to go get down to, I think, four degrees this evening and uh, with more snow. Um, weather said with the wind, I don't think this uh, blast of cold air has hit, <laughs> well, the other blast of cold air has hit us yet. Um, weather said that uh, once that comes in, we'll expect heavier snow and uh, blizzard-like conditions. Now, I have lived up north as a kid, but uh, folks that are native here in Texas, and, and I am a native, but uh, and moved around as a kid, but uh, they've never seen anything like this. And supposedly for the Dallas 404, Dallas North Texas, uh, Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, this is actually the coldest that it has been in 22 years. Um, so we're bracing ourselves. We're about 75 degrees inside uh, the motor coach, and it is nice and warm. And I tell you what, I would love talking to you more outside and showing you some more of this beautiful snow. But uh, right now I'm going back inside because it's a heck of a lot warmer. Like I said, it's a lot warmer in here than it was outside. My hands were actually starting to get a little cold. And uh, being Miko's a, a husky, she did not want to come inside. We are inside and we are quite comfortable inside. Uh, like I said, it is a warm, uh, as we was looking over, actually the indoor temperature shows 78 degrees. And I'll be really honest with you, I'm actually only using two small ceramic heaters uh, where I'm at. I'm um, not using the propane uh, he heaters, and I have my bedroom shut, uh, door shut. Let me show you that, and I'll show you these heaters. I'll leave the Amazon link down below, and uh, that way you can uh, see for yourself and try them out. Well, we are in Texas, which uh, we're home-based in Weatherford, Texas right now, and it is 15 degrees and dropping. I uh, believe tonight's low temperature is going to be 4 degrees. And I wanted to do something kind of special because here in Texas, we don't run into this a lot. But if you're RVing and you're wintertime RVing and you're not down in Florida or you're not in Arizona or you're not in North Texas, under these conditions anyway, uh, what do you do to stay warm in your RV? So we had some comments on our Facebook page. We actually put it out as a question of uh, the day. Got some good answers. And 
I said, you know what? We ought to do just uh, just do a video on this uh, and, and, and share it. So we're going to do that exact same thing on how to keep your RV warm and you warm inside your RV and some preparation tips that you might want to consider. Now, summertime, of course, is the best time to be RVing. But if you're full time and you can't make it to Florida and you can't make it to Arizona, what do you do? You've got to battle these elements at some point uh, because I guarantee you, your RV wants to stay just as warm as what you do. I promise you. So one of our questions is, how do you live in your RV in the wintertime? Well, first thing and foremost is preparation, is getting ready. One of the things that you might consider is this. First thing you need to consider is this, your pipes. How do you keep your pipes from freezing? Now, we took our outside water hose and put uh, heat wrap on it, and then we double insulated it with aluminum foil, and then I came back with uh, pipe insulation. Now you can go to Walmart and buy pool noodles and do the same thing as what pipe insulation is. And you can actually buy pool noodles a little bit cheaper than pipe insulation. It's the same daggum material. Uh, you just slit up a, a slit in it, measure it, put a slit in it, and then wrap your pipes. Um, we did it double uh, with the aluminum foil. I used uh, a double wrap of heavy, duties, heavy duty uh, Reynolds wrap and wrap that up and then we came back with our, our pipe insulation over top of it with our heat cable wrapped around it. Uh, now, in our particular motorhome, uh, I, our pipes are underneath our floor and then they're covered up underneath. So everything, there's no pipes that are exposed uh, to the outside except for our water hose, of course, that's running to our freshwater hookup here where we're home base. As long as I can keep my floors warm, because it's right underneath the subfloor, uh, then I shouldn't have a problem. Knock on wood. Uh, we're about to test that theory out uh, when it drops down to about four degrees tonight. Another thing is I'm not running my furnace. I have a propane furnace. I am not running it. And I've used two ceramic heaters up top and one ceramic, one ceramic heater down in my water bay just to make sure that I, I like to be redundant. Uh, just to make sure that our hose stays warm and, uh, and our tanks stay warm. Now I've got my black tank sealed off. I've got my gray tank open and it's flowing uh, with, a, with a good gravity down into our, our sewer. Um, for the simple reason, it, it doesn't limit, limit me on taking a shower uh, I can still wash dishes, and I'm not going outside and dumping that gray tank all the time, and it's not freezing up. Now, one thing that I did do is I took uh, a gallon of uh, marine and RV antifreeze, and I put in my black tank. And uh, what you want to do on that is uh, pour about a half a gallon of that into your, your tank, and uh, that'll help that tank from freezing. If you want to keep your your gray tank open or your gray tank closed, uh, by all means, do that if that's what you feel comfortable doing. In my particular situation, I didn't do that. Another thing that you may want to consider because your windows in your RV you lose a lot of heat, even if you have shades or curtains. Um, if you're full timing and you're up in the north or northeast, and uh, you're going to have these temperatures for quite some time in the winter. Uh, one thing we had a tip on our, on our Facebook page was uh, to use his bubble wrap. Good insulation. You can buy window insulation, RV insulation, at uh, places like Camping World. Uh, Amazon has it also, and I'll put a link down below. Uh, in fact, folks, everything that we talk about here today, uh, I'll have a link uh, where you can uh, purchase those products. Um, another thing that you may want to consider is, and if you don't want to buy the uh, the heat wrap, is buy a heated hose. They do sell those, especially if you're in the north or northeast where it's going to be uh, continued cold. Uh, you may want to buy and purchase a a heated water hose. Now, something else that you may want to uh, think about if you're Again, up in uh, the north or northeast or where you're going to be experiencing uh, extreme cold is 
don't use your outside water. That way you don't have to worry about your hose. Fill up your fresh water tank and make sure that that's heated and uh, just use just use the water off your fresh water tank. You don't have to worry about uh, your outside uh, freezing up. Another something for you to consider. Uh, we had mentioned your windows. Something else that you may want to do is insulated curtains. Now, folks, when we talk about this, we're not talking about the situation that I'm in right now. Uh, trust me, it, it, it hadn't been this cold in 22 years in the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, or North Texas area. So this is, this is not, a lot of these things are not uh, things that I'm going to go out and purchase. Insulated curtains will certainly keep that cold air from, uh, from coming in. Now we were talking about what I'm using as far as uh, two ceramic heaters and I'm not using my, uh, my furnace which runs off of propane. Um, some RVs have heat pumps and they have furnaces. Your heat pump is only going to work for certain temperature. So rule of thumb, when it drops below 45 degrees, you're going to want to turn your heat pump off and turn your furnace on. That way you stay nice and warm. The, the heat pump won't, uh, won't work if it's below 45 degrees, or rule of thumb, that is. Now, folks, if you're uh, full-time living in your RV in uh, extreme winter conditions, uh, you're probably going to want to use your propane furnace. So something that you may want to consider is make sure that you've got plenty of propane and you don't run out, say, in the middle of the night with temperatures dropping down to 4 degrees, you freeze your butt off, uh, and have to go to the store the next morning to get propane because you ran out during the night. Make sure that you've got plenty of propane. Something else that you might want to consider now, I told you about the way that our pipes are with the subfloor or right underneath the subfloor. Uh, a lot of uh, travel trailers and even fifth wheels, uh, you might want to consider uh, skirting those if you're going to be at your home base uh, for very long during the winter. Um, that way, at least it will keep that cold air from blowing in you might if uh, on extreme uh, weather conditions uh, put a uh, put a heater underneath uh, your or your rv and uh, skirt it and that'll keep that heat locked in uh, under your rv where the pipes are uh, just be careful when doing that and, and be safe now we pretty much talked about uh, so far just keeping your rv nice and warm uh, as far as the RV itself. What about you? How do you stay nice and warm? And I'm going to put my glasses on. I never do this, but uh, I'm going to read a checklist that we've made up, and I can't read it unless I've got my glasses on. So, along with the uh, the stuff that you're normally going to pack for your RV trip, uh, consider adding uh, these items uh, during winter time. Uh, heavy coats and other winter clothing, uh, boots and heavy-duty winter shoes, Heat tape, thermal curtains, and other items necessary for insulating your RV for winter living. Uh, Freeze-proof heated water hose. And we talked about the heated hose. You can also utilize that. Uh, the RV skirt we talked about. Uh, an ice scraper. Uh, nothing worse than getting ready to move. Hello, Miko. Then getting ready to move, and uh, you can't go anywhere because your, your window is just... Full of ice, snow and ice. So an ice scraper would certainly work out fine. And especially if you've got a fifth wheel or you're pulling a travel trailer, uh, you're going to want to scrape off your windshield uh, on your truck also. Uh, RV antifreeze, we talked about that. Uh, you can get that at your local Walmart. Um, it's RV and Marine. You definitely want to use the RV slash Marine antifreeze. Don't go down to the and get you the press stone and pour in there. Uh, that'll eat your tanks up. You don't want to do that. We talked about the ceramic heaters that I'm using. Like I said, many indoor space heaters, which you can, uh, which will help to keep your the interior of your RV nice and toasty. Uh, we're setting at right now, which is actually a little warm, but I've got a sweater on and a hat. Uh, but it, we're sitting at 77 degrees inside. And again, I'm only running those two, um, those two ceramic heaters inside.
Hey YouTube, we've got a lot of good things going on. One of the things is we have partnered with RV Trip Wizard and that link should be showing up right now. I'll also have it down in the description. Uh, it's the only trip planner that we use and it also comes with the GPS. It has a seven day free trial and trust me, after the seven days, it is well worth the money. Try it out, RV Trip Wizard. Uh, and of course your favorite warm blanket and a mug of good hot cocoa or coffee. Uh, I'll take the coffee. Uh, and and uh, you know when you've got winter uh, winter weather like we've got uh, right now, with it blowing snow and we've got more snow in the forecast, you know what? I'm all prepared to hunker down right here in in, in my home on wheels and stay nice and warm. Now, folks, I know there's a lot of people. In fact, we've all. This is another thing that we put on our Facebook uh, group. Uh, about uh, camping, tent camping. And a lot of people camp in tents. Uh, a lot of people just have pop-up trailers and they're camping in the winter time. Uh, keep this in mind. Motor coach like I've got here is, is insulated. Um, like I said about the pipes running underneath the subfloor. Uh, it's, it's not made for winter RVing, but it, it is, it's, it's maintained that I can withstand uh, those colder temperatures for longer periods of time. Uh, keep this in mind, a pop-up tent and uh, you've got, uh, you're, you're taking it out and you didn't look to see what the weather forecast is and it drops below 32 or, or even a tent. Uh, that is a major concern for frostbite. Um, be careful and always prepare and check your weather forecast before heading out. Make sure you've got the appropriate uh, heating devices. Uh, just like I said, be safe just like you would with an RV, uh, putting that uh, heater un down below uh, as you're skirting it. Uh, just be safe with your heater and you'll stay nice and warm. But uh, I think uh, as we said in the very beginning preparation, knowing what the weather forecast is and knowing what your limitations are on your tent pop-up, uh, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motor coach. Now some tips and tricks for uh, winter RV living. Um, water can be your biggest enemy. And, and we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about water, hadn't we? And um, many, RV, many RVers will drain their fresh water tanks completely. They won't use any outside water. Uh, what they'll do is bring enough water or continue to buy enough water uh, bottled water, jugs of water, and use that for the season. Um, the bay that holds your tanks must always be kept from freezing. That's uh, another reason that we took our, uh, our ceramic heater and put down in our wet bay area to keep that area from freezing. Use RV antifreeze like we said before uh, in your plumbing, your gray, and your black tanks. You can do this by flushing the antifreeze down the toilets and pouring it into your drains. Uh, that said, do not, you do not want to introduce RV antifreeze into your fresh water tank. Let me repeat that one more time because I've seen some things on the internet of people saying, sure, go ahead and take your RV antifreeze and put that into your fresh water tank and you'll be, you'll be okay. Well, you're putting it into your fresh water tank. Why would you want to do that? That's your drinking water, water that you're going to shower with, and water that you're washing your dishes with. So don't... Don't, don't believe everything that you read. Uh, don't introduce that into your fresh water tank. Again, we had talked about making sure that your pipes are insulated. If you, use, if you choose to use a water hookup, uh, make sure you insulate the pipes with heat tape, and you'll also need to insulate the connections uh, and expose piping. Let me repeat that again. Just because you have your, your, your water hose insulated, uh, don't forget to insulate where it connects into. And any exposed piping that you have, uh, make sure that's insulated. Never allow your black tank to freeze unless you want to deal with a disgusting mess. And uh, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, use a PVC pipe for your sewer holes instead of the, uh, the regular um, accordion pipe. Which, by the way, we did have a sewer hose that froze up on us. And we uh, just made a trip down to the local Walmart. Bought another sewer hose, made sure I had uh, uh, plenty of gravity. That was my problem because the water was sitting in one area. If you're long periods of time that you're going to be in exposed weather, utilizing PVC pipe like you would use on a mobile home. Another thing is this, don't dump your holding tanks until they're full. Now that's pretty much normal 
we don't do that anyway. Um, I don't I don't dump my holding tanks until they're almost full anyway, and especially that's my gray tank and my black tank for the simple reason uh, you utilize your gray tank with that water to wash down all the um, the nasties coming out of your black tank. Now another thing that I utilize, and I utilize this pretty much all year long, is a Pro Breeze dehumidifier. Right now my humidity inside my motor coach is sitting at 20% humidity with an outside humidity of 65%. Guys, you can never be too dry inside your motorhome. And if you feel like your, ha your hands are getting dry, your feet are getting dry because you don't have enough moisture, take some lotion and put on there. I would rather do that than have a lot of humidity inside. Now, if you're using propane cooking or you're using your propane furnace, it's going to create moisture and you want to take that moisture out. You don't want that moisture inside your motorhome, I promise you, or your RV. Now, if you're planning on living in your RV during the winter, you likely won't want to winterize it. But if you're not using it and you're, and you're going to take it to the storage house, you definitely want to winterize your RV's plumbing system. And it can be done uh, in two ways. You can run RV antifree antifreeze through your in, uh, entire plumbing system, which is safe since the RV-specific product is non-toxic. And we talked about that. You don't want to use your Prestone uh, antifreeze or just call regular car antifreeze. You want to make sure that it's uh, your RV slash marine antifreeze. Now, utilizing Prestone or regular antifreeze, a lot of campers say that they can that they can taste that antifreeze long after they dump it. And alcohol-based antifreezes can dry out and degrade your plumbing uh, fittings over time. So, definitely just use your RV antifreeze. If you do utilize RV antifreeze to winterize your RV system, be sure to bypass your RV's hot water heater and make sure you're using the right stuff. And we've gone over that. I don't know how many times, make sure that it is RV slash marine antifreeze. Regular engine antifreeze has no place in your RV plumbing. The other winterizing option is a little bit less in intrusive. It involves using compressed air to blow out your RV's water lines and ensure they are nice and dry, uh, which will help you to avoid any type of a freeze damage. You'll need to use RV blowout plugs to achieve this. And I'll put a link to that where you can get it if you don't have it and you need it, down below in our description. Uh, be sure to check your owner's manual also on your, uh, your motorhome, your uh, travel trailer, or your fifth wheel to learn the correct pressure uh, to use as to not damage anything. You certainly don't want to do that and then blow your plumbing completely out because you use too high of a pressure. You'll also need to drain your RV's hot water heater. Uh, you'll likely need a socket wrench to do this and uh, though I'm not sure what, what size, uh, or I would give you that because every RV is going to be different. Uh, it's just based on what kind of RV you have. Uh, as always, if you, if you need to, just consult your owner's manual uh, for details on winterizing. And guys, just in closing, uh, you're going to see some beautiful, unique sights along the winter RV trip. There's nothing quite like being in solitude in a winter cap site with that snow coming down or or the snow's already there and it's just, uh, you know how it is when you, you, you get that snow, it's just peaceful and quiet. It's great. But these are tips for you to take care of yourself while enjoying that peace and quiet and solitude and taking care of your RV so that when the weather warms up and you get ready to move on, uh, you don't have to worry about pipes freezing or anything else like that and uh, you're self-contained and ready to go. Guys, we appreciate you watching. I hope uh, some of these tips helped you. And uh, be sure and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Give us a like. A like equals more views that YouTube's going to give us. So please help us out there. Leave us a comment. I love reading them. Ring that bell. That way you know what the next video is coming up. We do have a Facebook group. And I'm going to put that link down below at the bottom. Uh, you'll also see it on your screen probably right now. Uh, scrolling by. Uh, join our Facebook group. Uh, it is about RV and camping. We want you to pull up a chair by our campfire and share your stories and ideas and tips. Look forward to seeing you next time on Kicking It Van Vost. Stay safe. God bless. Remember this, that life is a journey. It's not a destination.